The 40 Hadith of Imam Nawawi Commentary by Sheikh Muhammad Al Yaqubi Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Hadith number 12 This hadith is very important Abu Dawood the author of the Sunan says this hadith represents a quarter of our deen. It is narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala an. It is also very succinct, brief, an example of the eloquence of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Very few words. Min husni islami al-mar'i tarkuhu ma la ya'ni. Literally speaking, it means it is of the beauty of your Islam to leave what does not concern you. These are called jawami'ul kalim, very brief statements made by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, putting in fewer words, the least number of words, larger and greater meanings. So Islam has its own beauty and you want to show it and you should be showing it to others. This is the idea number one which we pick up from this hadith. Husnul Islam, the beauty of Islam. There are several instances when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam talked about the appearance of a Muslim and how a Muslim should be appearing beautiful, clean, elegant. He himself, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, apart from being the most beautiful and handsome human being, he took care of his appearance, especially when delegations came from around Arabia to al Medina, al Munawwara. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to look in the mirror, comb his hair, take care of his beard, apply perfume, apply olive oil on his head, dress in the best way, most elegant way. He had sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam a special gown, jubba, for Fridays. He had a special jubba for delegations, just to meet delegations. He had the best type of clothes, most expensive clothes in his time even. He received once a gown that was purchased for 33 camels. For what reason? He wanted to show the beauty of Islam and those people who are attached to the outward form, when they look at him, they see in him the perfect example of elegance. So Islam has its own beauty and it appears on us. Now Islam is, Islam principles are written in books. Islam's beliefs are in our hearts. How do people see our Islam in other than our actions, our appearance? This is why the Prophet وسلم, wanted us to be, as in one hadith, like a beauty mark. A believer should be shama. It's a beauty mark. People look at him and get fascinated when they see a Muslim walking in the streets. Especially when you live in non-Muslim lands, amongst non-Muslims. The Prophet وسلم, said in one hadith, from Abu Huraira radiyallahu anh, in Sahih Muslim, Inna Allah jameelun yuhibbu al-jamal. Allah is the creator of beauty and loves beauty. So in this hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam calls our attention to one aspect of the beauty of our Islam, a social aspect that is usually uh, displayed when people get in conversations with each other. And this is to keep away from things that do not concern you. In English idioms, mind your own business. That's the perfect translation of the hadith. Mind your own business. 
من حسن إسلام المرء تركه ما لا يعني it is one of the beautiful aspects of your religion your Islam is to mind your own business not to stick your nose in other people's businesses another idiom another way of putting it why should you be concerned about others this is not only about talking even about looking about hearing about exposure Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak was walking with one of his students and they came across a beautiful house so his students started looking at it Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak turned him turned his face didn't want him to look at it why because it doesn't concern you looking at it would probably get you attached to doing something similar competing in doing something similar this is why if you go to old cities like Damascus Cairo these old cities you walk in the old lanes you see houses from outside all similar they are all painted with uh, white you don't distinguish from outside the house of the wealthy from the house of the poor this is part of the ethics in Islam of uh, of architecture so that people do not get uh, distracted people do not uh, also uh, feel sorry for not having these things Imam Malik was asked about his age and he said to the questioner mind your own business أقبل على شأنك it became actually a hadith musalsal because later on Imam Shafi'i was asked about his age and he said to the questioner أقبل على شأنك mind your own business Imam Ahmad later on was asked about his age and he narrated that I asked Imam Shafi'i and Imam Shafi'i told me so and so and he said he asked Imam Malik and he told me so and so أقبل على شأنك my age doesn't matter what matters is the subject of the conversation or the dealings or the business we're doing regardless of of the age whether I am elderly or young the bottom line here is mind your own business and your business is salvation at the end of time your business in this life is worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam your business in this life is to go out and seek sustenance and support your family your business in this life is to learn your deen your business in this life is to lower your gaze your business in this life is to help others mind your own business don't get attached to other people's businesses and start investigating why they're getting this how did they get this then you start developing envy you start developing animosity then they, you get all of these diseases mind your own business very simple advice from the best human being our beloved Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته